How's it going, creator people? I hope you all are doing well. Today we are going over a video that was suggested to me. Uh, this one is, I think they had a short video of it, but this is by Joel Beckman. And it says in the title, by any means necessary when dealing with a bully, let's show him how to meet dogs properly. That doesn't sound too good, but uh, we're just going to jump right into it. You're going to see Prince and this brown dog get into a fight. I never enjoy these type of sessions. They always make Oh, me... baloney. Of course you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't post them. You get off on this kind of bullying yourself. You know, you yourself are the bully and you're bullying another dog. So you absolutely get off on this. And... Nervous. They... And we can tell right here, Prince is already pissed all over this. Which is probably what that is. I don't think it's water. It's probably Prince peeing all over the damn fence. Because he doesn't know how to not be a bully. Because bully one raised bully two. Um, and so this little guy and this guy here pull Joel to him. Which he allows to happen so he has a better before and after. This brown dog is going to overwhelm the sweet little white dog. And that's going to show me what... So we have a difference because the brown dog is fixed... He may have his, you know, scrotum still intact, but, um, you know, which means he's fixed later in life, but he doesn't have any testes, but Prince does. Both have dog tails. Type of dog I'm dealing with. This brown dog is like a kind of a one in a hundred dog. So he's really drooling. Uh, we could tell this dog's been drooling the whole time, which to me said, you know, his tail is down. He has a very curved back, which says he's, his ears are back, whale eyes, worried face, short, kind of, yeah, kind of short lips and drooling. Tells me this dog is very nervous versus bully too over here with his ears forward even though they're cropped tail very high his weird little mutant body that we've made these dogs look like um very stiff bully he has no i'm not saying this dog isn't a bully he but he's showing very excitable very nervous overwhelming very nervous prince goes to piss again all over the damn fence because he's just a neanderthal compared to you know i mean this Neanderthal over here raised this one, so teaching him very bad manners. Um, this dog is, is acting very skittish and like, whoa, hey. And he can be a bully. A lot of people ask me for this. They say, I want Prince to correct my dog. But it's actually not right for their dog because it's often based in fear. And it's never right if a dog corrects another dog when it's based in fear. Or it's in a perverted sense of a job so barrier reactivity I, really I do love... like that for a second there the leash was loose which prevented more of the reaction um, but we still have this barrier here we have a barrier here we have tension on the leash to have a dog correct a dog when they are trying to do a job they just don't know how to do it sometimes it can work but in this video i'm gonna explain another p god dang dude this dog is such a bully. I wish, I mean, Adonis would absolutely tear him a new one and tell him, hey, you're not going to get away, away with that kind of behavior with me. Get the hell out of my face. Stop doing this. You know, I mean, he's not going to, I would love, like, when I, I see dogs like this, I would love to have a group of herding dogs just go over and just continually harass the dog and herd them until into a little corner until they learn some manners. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, you know. Don't actually go do that. I don't you know, wish any harm on anybody. But when I have a when I see a loose dog, I wish I had a herding dog that would be able to go run circles around the dog and herd them back to their owner until their owner put a leash on them. I mean, that's just it's just dog a dream from somebody type. who's irritated by. I'm gonna show you how I set this dog up for success and, people. and why he needed to lose the so fight. This looks to like this dog wants and to, to me play and to the owner yeah. to some. This some looks degree. a lot more like play behavior. Video. And Prince and is like a lion, just like, to look at. you know, now pacing, looking for his prey. Right I'm going to slow it down for you. If that fence wasn't there, this would have been a hit to the side of Prince that would have caused a fight. If that fence wasn't there, he probably wouldn't have tried to do that. If you had him on, you know, a muzzle on, which he's going to put on here in a minute, and off leash or no tension in the leash, he probably wouldn't have tried to go at Prince. Again, this seems like it's, we have some hackles up here. It seems to me like it's more of just, you know, a mixture of fear and or wanting to play. I don't now see it as aggression. Now, the intention of the hit, you're going to see this dog meet multiple dogs, and you're going to see a changing point in the middle of this session. It he's looks like he wants to play with him. overwhelming to the sweetest dog in the world. Then he's going to meet Prince, 
who is not going to put up with cut there, what happened in the cut to it. Then you're going to meet him, meet other dogs. And he is going to be pretty cool with those other dogs. This is nature. This is the way organisms. No, it is not nature because nothing is natural about a dog over the last anywhere between 15 to 23,000 years that we have domesticated them. We have changed them and made them mutants. It is probably healthier of any boxer I've seen or a boxer mix, you know, but we've made them mutants and we've made them just absolute slaves. So there's nothing natural about a dog. They don't know nature if it hit them in the face. Dogs would go extinct if it weren't for humans or they would revert back to their natural, more natural ancestry. But helping a dog like this is not easy. That's why I'm launching the Beckman. It is because I specialize in it. It really is. If he's reacting, create distance. When he's below threshold and he's able to look at you and he's able to chill and make friends with the butterflies and watch the other dog and look away on his own, reward. And you keep doing that and slowly decreasing the amount of space between him and the trigger. And that might take time, but it's simple. You know, kiss, keep it stupid simple or keep it simple stupid. Um, it takes time. But if you take the time it takes, it takes less time. And it's more appropriate for the dog. You're not yanking and choking on their, on their trachea, causing a collapsed trachea. You know, you got the esophagus, or I guess, yeah, no, the, the esophagus is probably lower here. But, you know, trachea, you've got the thyroid glands, you have blood vessels, all sorts of things. Salivary glands. And program, I'm going to teach you to be the type of person that can help your aggressive dog if your dog has the potential. People, but... really, I'm surprised that it, it, I wouldn't, I mean, I would be surprised if more people didn't sue him. Because he is, this is a, a, this kind of class or package, whatever he's trying to sell is, as a snake oil salesman, is, is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Because they're going to act aggressively with their dog, which will either injure their dog, kill their dog, or cause their dog to injure or kill another animal or person. If you want to be abusive to your animal in the name of training and teach them to become more dangerous or teach yourself to become more dangerous, then follow his thing a community section for support it's basically the single best aggression reduction program there is <laughs> no there's not it's the the most aggressive abusive program there is it's among one of them dummy see him approach every dog like this and this well, is because there's a barrier this is how fights are caused there's two barriers by a non-aggressive dog this dog actually isn't aggressive, but there's he can be aggressive. There's a fence and there's a leash. He and he still pushing. looks like he wants to play. He that's a play battle. Dog. He says, that's frustration. Fight, that's pent-up energy. Fight. The other dog doesn't like it. You can teach the other dog to move away. And he will fight. His one friend in the world he is He will not fight. Not necessarily. A 20-pound Alaskan Malmute that flipped him and put him on his back. And now they are friends. That is the information I They don't know. have to be friends. Your dog doesn't have to make friends with everyone they come across. That's the whole problem that people like him make is that, you know, it, it, they try to reinforce the idea your dog has to be friends with everybody or get along. I don't care if my dog is friends with everybody or, or has not a friend in the world because he's with me. I don't care about that. You know, I want him to be able to, I will teach him and raise him to, or, or her, my future dog. I don't have a dog now. Uh, rest in peace, Adonis. Love you, little boy. Um, when he was alive, he, I didn't care about him having friends because he didn't care about having friends. He preferred people and little kids over dog friends. I mean, I raised him and taught him to be tolerant of other animals to a degree. If they're up in your space and they're, you know, you can tell them off, but it's just that, um, but you know, he didn't care to have dog friends. He was, I mean, he, and he could go into any home i could rehome him in any home i mean dogs it depends on what kind of dogs there are but when my apartment flooded and i was in texas and there was a snowstorm and it was a blizzard really and i you know one of the pipes froze and burst because i had a sprinkler system up there you know in the apartment it flooded and i was you know over a thousand miles away and my you know the the on-site manager there at 12 30 in the morning was you know bless her heart poor thing um she was able to take adonis into her apartment overnight and he was perfectly fine she didn't have other dogs 
but he was fine. She was able to leash him up. She took him there. He stayed there. He was totally fine. And then I had a friend who offered to come up. Um, he came up and he, you know, took Adonis. He had two other dogs, but he just kept him separate. He took Adonis. Adonis was fine. You know, anybody can take his leash and take him anywhere and he can see other dogs. And, and you know, as long as he's not uh, being approached by the other dogs on leash, he's fine. And if he is, then, you know, he might kind of give him a little, you know, he might have kind of like, hey, but then if you told him, like, hey, leave it, and he would be good. As long as the other dog was respectful, too. And if they weren't respectful, I wouldn't tell him leave it, and I would let him, you know, tell him, sn air snap and tell him to back off. But that's beside the point. The, but, the, you know, Adonis didn't have friends, but he was, he could go with anybody. And he trusted people. This dog will never trust people. That's why he's more into other dogs. But this point of the session... So basically, I know that he needs to run against a brick wall in order to get better. No, he doesn't. He needs a lot of energy burnt out of him. He might be part Rhodesian for all we know. He needs to be. He needs to be corrected. Do we? Do we agree? I mean, there's there's <laughs> certainly dogs I've worked with and boxers and and you know more bully type breeds that did need a correction. That's what Adonis was great for, you know. But he also was. Adonis was a wise dog. You know, he didn't just go correct out of nowhere. He only corrected if they really needed it. It's not Prince. It's not some big male that's got balls. See, the dog is, is moving against pressure because he's nervous. He has a muzzle on. He probably hasn't been conditioned to. I do like it's a basket muzzle. Um, he's leaning into him and he's pushing him away. But the dog is actually leaning into pressure because they're nervous and he doesn't even this realize is, it. You cannot be freaking mean to this dog. Right. And I want I just want you to be on board with that. Which I know you are. This is one of the worst meetings I've oh. ever seen without there being a dress. Okay, so first off, this dog is pulling really hard towards him. This dog isn't even trained. If you're going to have a dog meet him, the other dog needs to be trained to not be pulling the, own, the, the, the handler towards the other dog. And this dog should not be pulling either. So if they're both on loose leash, then we can have a sniff. It might still happen. But if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have both dogs muzzled, have them off leash. Or dragging a leash, you know, but... Because the tension is there, he is muzzled, he feels like he's handcuffed, and he's already nervous, and then you add tension, and this dog pulling to get to you, of course he's going to be have a really rough greeting. So there's no aggression in here. It is just full bore, overwhelming force, Agreed. and no hold back in the dog whatsoever, Agreed. to the point where the little dog was overwhelmed and so i'm gonna have to give this dog a correction. Okay, so he's still allowing this dog to to run over here again for a better video or because he's just an idiot the instant and this Prince dog starts to pull to i would back them away i would say uh -uh, we're not doing this way. don't allow this to happen he's allowing this to happen don't don't kid yourself he is going to learn i'm going to give him a correction right here you should and have that, been backing him away the entire time why are you waiting for this that alaskan malmute the owner did it and the mom flipped him and overpowered him. So I know that now, so I'm going to overpower him. No. He needs to be over. I would have walked him back and said, okay, we're going to wait until we look at this dog calmly. And at any point you start to run towards this dog, we're going to go back. And it's a two-step dance or a 14-step dance, whatever it takes. Powered. You don't need to flip the dog over. Pure muscle and athleticism. He's only able to do this because the dog is muzzled. Otherwise, the dog probably would and should bite him because they're being attacked right now. He only understands being overpowered. It's no, literally he doesn't. the only Don't thing he understands. Don't him in the head. Man, I wish this dog would just like bump him right there, right in the groin, and take him down a notch. him with that little white dog. You get it. There, there's no other method but push him. I mean, no, there's not. There's many other methods, you idiot. Shut up. God, that's why I get so riled up in, in this. You know, whenever I do videos like uh, of his... I thought I was going to make it through the whole thing, but I probably won't. I mean, unless you want to see parts, then I'll, I'll take time in between each video to do parts, um, which I'm happy to do if I take a break in between them. <laughs> um, but this is just an ego. He says, I don't like making these types of videos. I don't like make, or doing these types of lessons. Of course he does. He gets off on it. I mean, this is his bread and butter. You know, needing a dog, a helpless animal that cannot defend itself against him. Now, I'm not saying this dog doesn't need a correction. The dog definitely needed a correction. Now, if I'm doing, you know, but but I give them as many chances as I, as I can first. And I'm not going to yank them. You know, if I have this dog really pulling me down, I'm going to bring him back. I will tie them to a tree 
on a bungee cord on a harness and walk the other dog up. And if the dog is going to run, then he's going to run to the end of the bungee, which will pull him back, where I'm going to run his butt out, you know, really run him, make him, make sure he tires himself out before he meets the other dog. Not as a punishment, but just as a way to really get rid of this pent up energy. Um, and then have this other, another, like a confident dog, not a submissive dog. Um, you know, I raised this dog's confidence because this idiot already made this dog more nervous. Hey, Hames. Um, but I would absolutely wear this dog's little booty out and tire him out. Um, and then, you know, make sure he's not overheating or anything like that. And then tie him to like one of these big palm trees. And I would have, you know, a big, big, but like a six foot bungee cord, you know, maybe doubled up if I have to on the back of a harness. And I would have, you know, somebody just, just nearby, you know, where I could toss a treat to him if I need to. And I would have the other dog and I would just slowly walk them up to this dog. And if that dog starts to lunge, I'm going to back this dog away. And we're going to stand there. And if he can stand there, I might have another handler go toss a treat or I might go vice versa, you know, where I'm standing there with him. And if he, you know, as long as he's, you know, not lunged and going crazy, I can give him a little reward. Or if he just wants to work on sniffing the other dog, that would be the goal where you don't even have to use food. Just have the other dog walk up. He lunges back, back and forth, back and forth. And, and he might be lunging just because he's so excitable and he's going to learn, hey, it's a lot of work. And this is not paying off. And when I'm calm, the other dog can come sniff me. We can sniff each other. But as soon as I start to, to go crazy, then the other dog backs away. And I get nothing. Back. Oh, but Joel, he doesn't understand how to meet dogs. That's exactly right. And so he needs to understand with force from me, force from the other dogs. That's the only way. There's no force-free way to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I just explained the force-free way to do this. And the way you're doing this is abuse. So he's making an excuse for abusing an animal and using force. He says, you're going to do it to the other dog. I'm going to do it to you. As much as I sometimes feel like I want to do that to a dog, there's been one or two dogs that were really pushing my limits. But you know what? They're just a product of their, of their environment. They've been raised that way. I can't go get mad at them. And I have not gotten mad at them. I mean, Adonis was, you know... We butted heads, you know, but I, I, but he still taught me, you know, that no matter however harsh or, or, you know, in the, in the early years, you know, I had trainers telling me this exact nonsense. And the more I did it, the more he became aggressive and he taught me that's not going to work. And so I learned, be patient, change the environment you're in. Again, do this, tie this guy on a nice harness, a comfortable harness, on a bungee line, a strong one with a strong carabiner if you need to, around a tree or some really stable position, and then let this dog walk up to him. And the bungee's there so he doesn't go hurt himself. You know, he, he wants to run and it's, and you can double the bungee, you can triple the bungee, whatever, so it's a lot more force to run forward than it is to run back. And eventually you slowly remove the bungee, you can have somebody holding him, you, you give some kind of positive reinforcement, which will increase the behavior of this dog being able to greet dogs politely. Or he starts to pull and you walk the other direction. We're not meeting this dog doing that. You go back and it's back and forth and back and forth. You take the time it takes, takes less time, and it's not abusive. I'm going to, I don't, I'm going to end this video here. If you want to see the rest of this, then please let me know. Um, put a little fire truck um, emoji in the comments below and we'll, we'll, you know, get to it. I'm trying to end on more of a positive note so I don't just get all flustered the rest of the day. Um... So yeah, let me know what you think of this video, and if you want a part two, and or part three, um, then yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching, I do appreciate it, I hope you all are doing well. Go say how to do to your little critters, give them some kind of loving for me, it's something that they appreciate, and until next time, practice peace, patience, and positivity.